in measure one, before you even play one note, you're going to pre-plant the E minor chord on the left hand. You're going to place the third finger on the fourth string G, second finger on the third string B, little finger on the second string E. On the right hand, again, before playing one note, you're going to pre-plant all four fingers. You're going to set the thumb on the sixth string, I on the fourth string, M on the third string, A on the second string. And notice on the planting that I have the planted fingers, they're locked onto the strings on the left sides of the fingernails. The thumb nail is planted on the right side. And they're planted on the nails. If you have fingernails, <laughs> you're going to plant on the left side of the nails and against the flesh at the same time. Here's a close-up view of the flesh nail contact I was talking about on the planting. You can see, probably with the M finger best, I'm on the skin and on the left side of the nail simultaneously. Same thing with I, same thing with the A finger. Flesh and nail together. Then here you can see a shot from well, underneath the strings, planting I, M, and A. Looks like this, the index finger, there it is, left side of the nail, and that fourth string, it's going across the skin. The M finger, same thing, it's on the third string, left side of the nail, and going across the skin. And the A finger, left side of the nail, string going on the flesh, across the flesh. All three fingers locked on their strings for that plant. Just like that. Now, once you have those fingers planted, you're going to play the first note of the piece, which is the six string open. But notice I, M, and A stay put locked on their strings. Don't release the pressure off the strings, don't lift entirely off the strings. Make sure those fingernails are locked onto the strings when your thumb plays. So just practice that first so you're secure with that planted, those planted fingers. Next, go ahead and play the chord like that with I, M, and A. So plant, play the sixth string, play the chord. Plant, play the sixth string, play the chord. The next step on beat two is that we have to silence that chord we just played and we're going to do that by planting all four fingers back onto the strings we started uh, planting on. So it's going to look like this. You plant it, play the sixth string, play the chord, Replant all four fingers. Just like that. Now you'll notice we have um, a harmonic ringing, sympathetic vibration. When I cut that chord, you hear that? It's the fifth string ringing. Don't worry about that. In the course of the piece, nobody's going to hear that. You, you're not even going to hear it. So don't worry about that, just do the plant. So once again, plant all four fingers, play the sixth string, play the chord, replant all four fingers. The next step is that you're going to re-strike the sixth string. So we have plant, play the sixth string, play the chord, replant everything, re-strike the sixth string. Notice when I re-strike the sixth string, I, M, and A are still planted. Then, go ahead and re-strike the chord. Like that. Again, make sure your plants are secure. You have all four fingers planted before you play anything. Your thumb plays a sixth string. You play your chord, replant, 
play the sixth string, still plant it with IMA, and then play with IMA. Practice that several times. You know, that is the basis of the piece, so you want that to be very secure, that articulation. The next step is that we're going to mute the second chord, just like we muted the first chord, only this time we're going to plant I on the fourth string, M on the third string, a on the second string, but we're going to allow the sixth string to keep ringing. We're not going to replant the thumb. So from the beginning, that looks like this. Right there. I play the chord and I reset I, M, and A, but notice the sixth string's ringing. Like that. So practice that a bunch of times until that's automatic. Do it slowly at first and then speed it up to tempo. Then fast. For the string damping or string muting in the third beat, cutting off the chord, Instead of using planting on the right hand to do that, you could just lift the left hand. Like that. Nothing wrong with that. Sometimes it's not quite as clean as planting with the right hand, but if, you, if the planting is confusing you or if it's difficult for you, go ahead and just do the lift. That's fine play the B minor 7th chord on the 4th and 5th beats, we can use a conventional flat bar like that, barring 5 strings. Another way to play the B minor 7th is use a partial bar, barring just the 3rd, 4th, and 5th strings, like that. Here is another view, barring just the 3rd, 4th, and 5th strings. And here it is from a slightly different angle. Again, partial bar, barring just the third, fourth, and fifth strings with the first finger. On beat four, when you play the fifth string B of the B minor seventh chord, you'll notice the sixth string is still ringing. We don't want that. We need to damp that sixth string. muddies up the bass. So what we'll do is play the fifth string and then damp the sixth string with the thumb. Just touch it. Play the fifth string bass note, touch the sixth string to damp it. Looks like this. Just like that. And usually you damp it quickly so you don't hear the two notes ringing against each other. Now to play the final chord in the measure, you'll note that you've planted I, M, and A to damp the second E minor chord right there. So those fingers are already on the strings to play the final B minor seventh chord. So all together, looks like that. So I would practice that several times until you have all that coordinated together and can do it effortlessly and accurately. Now, on beat three, if you didn't use planting to damp the second E minor chord, but instead just lifted the left hand, then your fingers are in the air. So what's going to happen is your thumb will play the fifth string, and then you'll damp the sixth string with your thumb, and then Play your chord like that. Play, damp, play your chord. Or you could replant I, M, and A as your thumb plays that fifth string of the B minor seventh chord. 
that would look like this. There's your fingers in the air. Plant as you play the B, then damp the sixth string, and then you're all set to play the chord like that. Again, plant, damp, play your chord. Uh, another way to do the string damp is to use the back of the thumb like that. As you play the fifth string, just lean the thumb into the sixth string simultaneously and the thumb, the flesh, will touch the sixth string and damp it. Like that. And you're all set to play the fifth string. Now the only thing about this technique is that you have to have a fairly wide thumb, fairly fat thumb, to do it easily. Otherwise it requires too big of a hand position change to accomplish. In that case you'd be better off doing the other method, playing the fifth string, then damping the sixth string. But try it out. If your thumb is wide enough, you may find that it's very natural for you to do and works very successfully. On the downbeat of measure two, we are going to replant I, M, and A. I on the fourth string, M on the third string, A on the second string. It's going to look like this. From measure one, we play the sixth string, down B of measure two, and plant I, M, and A. Again, plant. Just like that. That is preparation for playing the next E minor chord. So now, what we have is one complete cycle of that accompaniment pattern. And we just play it over and over again, practice it over and over again, until it's second nature to you. Of course, do it slowly at first. And then gradually speed it up as you gain more confidence. The techniques in measure two and three are the same as measure one.